Now, give you something a little technical, but it's kind of interesting. I think um, it'll kind of jog your mind. Um, the Antichrist, as we know, may take the name of Christ. And let me tell you why I think that that may happen. Revelation 13 talks about the beast. And it says he has the name, or excuse me, the name of blasphemy. Now, Webster defines blasphemy as taking on the attributes of God, not just devoting God or blaspheming God, but actually taking on the attributes of God oneself, okay? Now, um, the Bible says that the name of the beast or the number of his name, but I'm going to show you something in the Bible that will give you a tip, that the number of the beast and the name of the beast may be merged together. Now, watch this. The Greek text underlying the King James Bible um, that was originally written is called a textus receptus, okay? And we have about 5,200 manuscripts extant today, and 99% of those agree with the King James Bible. That's why it's called the Textus Receptus. It just simply means the text received by all. It's the Greek text that has been used in the church throughout the 2,000 years since Jesus Christ has been here. And when we read uh, Revelation, where it says, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. Word is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. Okay. Now, the Texas Receptus has three letters representing 603 score and 6 in the Greek text. Okay. Now, this represents 600, this represents 60, and this represents 6. In the Greek language, they had a system wherein Greek letters represented numbers, Okay. very much like Latin numerals. All right. Now, when we look at the very first letter, um, the first letter is abbreviation for Christ in Greek. You will see that very often in the Roman Catholic churches where they have like a P with an X through it. Okay? The second letter uh, would, be, uh, would symbolize Christ for the Latin-speaking people because X is the 21st letter of the Latin al alphabet and represents the phonetic value of KS. So to Latin-speaking people, that sound would represent Christ. Okay. And then when we look at the sigma, which is this letter right here, it corresponds to the Hebrew samak, which is the 15th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that most nearly expresses X. So what you have here in the three languages that we have on the cross, uh, Greek, Hebrew, and Latin, you have X, 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 or Christ, Christ, Christ. Okay. And so this is not the true Christ. This is the false Christ. Now in Luke chapter 2 it says, he had seen the Lord's Christ, saying that there is a counterfeit, there is a false Christ. Revelation 11 said, our Lord and his Christ. In other words, there is a true Christ and there is an antichrist, there is a false Christ. Now, the Greek manuscripts and texts underlying the NIV and the NASB and all the modern translations do not have these three letters here for 603, 4, and 6. They have 666 written out. So that clue has been completely omitted in those new versions. No one would ever find out that the name of the Christ and the number of the Christ are the same, that his name he will be the Christ. He will say he is the Christ. Okay? Now, there's something very interesting that I discovered. It says there, count the number of the beast. It's telling you to count. And so what I did is I counted the number of times the authorized King James Version has the name, the full name of God. Okay. We'll see it has it seven times Jehovah in the Old Testament and um, 84 times the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Total, that's 91 times. And I thought to myself, well, I wonder if when I count the number of the beast, if in the new versions, if they have 66.6% as many times, and I did it, and they do. When you look at the name Jehovah and you look at the title of the Lord Jesus Christ, they have it 60 times or 61 times, which comes out to 66.6% as many times. And so I think that's a very telling thing that's happening there. Now, um, 